Hello everyone and welcome back to another video in our series of quick snapshots on using the new and also some of our all-time favourite functions in the newest version of the Husqvarna Viking and FAF MISONET embroidery software. In this video we are actually going to be using the draw and paint module and we're going to create a graphic image so in our next ser series of lessons we can actually then digitise that graphic image. We are going to start this time from our desktop and on your desktop you will see your MySonet icon. So double left mouse click to open that and then we're going to open the tools folder. So double left mouse click to open tools. Then we're going to double left mouse click on the draw and paint icon and the software will open up onto our screen. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is check that this is called now called the canvas. Okay, so to check the canvas side, we're going to come up to the view tab and we're going to check we are after the 200 by 200, but if you need to resize your canvas, just click on the resize icon here, change your parameters here and then click OK. So what we're going to do now is come into our insert tab and we're going to start with a shape. So we're going to click on the down arrow at the bottom here which is to preview all the shapes and again we can expand the window out so we can see more of our shapes. So there's actually 120 shapes pre-built into the software. For this particular exercise we're going to choose shape number 15 and then we're going to click on the insert shape icon and there's our first shape. What we're going to do, you'll notice that it's got a inner purple and then it's got a border in a darker purple. I don't want the border or the outline around that design. So I'm going to come over to the control panel here on the right hand side and under my line section, I'm going to just select left mouse click in the remove line option and you'll now see that it's highlighted and the line is now missing from around the shape. I'm now just going to move this shape down so the point of the shape is in the center of where the crosshairs meet. Then I'm going to come into our multiply tab up the top here. I'm going to make sure that it's for a circle. I'm going to have six repeats and then I'm going to come back and click on enable multiply. And now it's basically broken up my canvas into six um, portions and then I have my what we call the master shape so as I move this master shape it will move all the other ones relevant as well so you get a, a look at what you're going to create so I'm going to put this back pretty much into the center okay and then I'm going to play with the master shape so I can create a design that say spreads it out a bit and then you can see the overlap here. So I don't want an overlap, so I'm going to bring it down again. So we do want a small gap between each of the uh, wedges, but we don't want them um, too big a gap and we don't want them overlapping. So now it's just a case of I now need to say stretch this sideways and then put it back to center. So I've created too much now. So now we just go back to here tuck that in. So I'm just looking for a very small gap between the design. Okay, so when I bring it into the digitizing program, it will see it as individual um, parts. Okay, so once you're happy with the placement of your design, okay, then you're going to come up to apply multiply. And now that will fix it as the image shapes. So you can see here that they're now individual shapes. Okay, let's add another element to the, another shape element to this design. Again, we're going to come over into the control panel. So just before you start um, to change colors, make sure that nothing is selected on the screen or as I change the color over here, it'll change the color of the select, selected object. So I'm just going to left mouse click outside of the object to deselect it. I'm now going to come over to my fill area box and I'm going to click on the down arrow to change color 
and I'm going to select a green. Once I've done that, I'm going to come back to my Insert tab. I'm going to preview my shapes again. And this time I'm going to select shape number 14. And then click on Insert Shape. And now I'm just going to move this shape up so it's above our um, first star design. And I am going to zoom in around this so I can see in more detail okay, what is happening. So I'm going to have it so that these little um, corners here just come over to the edges of the design. So I don't want to make it any bigger or taller. So I'm just going to um, left mouse click and hold and I'll stretch it out a bit and then I'll put it back on the centre. So I'm using my little um, arrows and my little bullseye here to get my centre position. So now I'm going to stretch it again. So this time you can see now I've held the control key down and it's actually stretching it from centre out. So I'm just going to keep stretching that out until it's just over the point of the purple um, wedge here. Okay, so I'm going to zoom to fit so I can see what I've created there. Now we're going to go back to our multiply tab it's still set for circle with six repeats, so all I need to do is click on Enable. And you can see that it's now pretty much put it exactly where I want, so I don't have to play with the master um, shape. So I can then now just go Apply, Multiply. And now I've created the second shape. While we're on a roll, let's go for another one. So deselect the shape that's on the screen. And this time we're going to change our color to blue. So come over to the fill section, check on fill color, and I'm going to make it an aquary blue color. This time we're now going to come back over to insert. So click on the insert tab, click on the down arrow to preview the shapes. And this one we're looking for is shape number 73, which is our curved heart. So I'm going to click on the curved heart click on insert shape and it's launched it into the middle of the screen. Do now is I'm going to actually rotate this 90 degrees. Over on the control panel on the right hand side under the edit section here is you've got your rotate 45 degrees. I'm going to click on that twice so I've now got my heart lying on the side. Now I'm going to move it over to the right hand side of the hoop Okay, and again, I'm going to position the little bullseye so it's on the center horizontal grid line. And then I'm going to make sure that I do leave a small gap again between the heart and the green and purple star. Okay, let's go back to the multiply tab. So then now that we've done that, again, we're just going to click on enable multiply and automatically you've now got your other hearts there in position. So we don't need to alter those. So now I'm just going, oh, I might have a little bit too much gap there. So I might just bring the master one in just a little bit closer, but not too close, because we are going to put a outline border around this design eventually. So just reposition, and then I'm going to click on Apply Multiply. One more shape for practice, so deselect the designs, come over to the fill colour box and we're going to select orange. So now I've chosen orange, again we'll come back to our insert tab, click on the down arrow to preview all the shapes and this one now we're going to look at is shape number 81. So we're going to select our little scroll, we're going to click on insert shape and there's our design in the middle. Once we've done that, we're now going to move this up to the top center. And I'm actually going to free rotate this design. So it sits between the two hearts at a angle that looks pleasing to me. I like the way that one's angled. I'm going to come back to our multiply tab enable multiply so they're all positioned perfectly 
and then I will apply the multiply and left mouse click outside to deselect. There's the basis of my design. Now in the Express Design Wizard, which will be the next lesson, we want to create a satin stitched outline around the certain elements. If I had have had the line option available during this particular shape, it would have put outlines around the six individual wedges. I don't want that, I just wanted one outline that goes around the outer perimeter of the purple star. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over and I'm going to make remove the colour from the fill so it's now um, no fill colour. I'm going to, it's automatically activated the line colour but I'm going to change that to black and I'm going to change the line thickness to 1.5 millimetres. Okay, might be a good idea to zoom in around your centre shape. So I'm just going to pick up my zoom box and zoom in around. And then when I've now going to place the points for it, so over on the right hand side under the draw section, we're going to select point draw. So click on that to activate it. And now you'll have your little cursor with a little circle of nodes. So I'm going to start up here and I'm going to hold down my shift key on my keyboard and then I'm going to left mouse click which will give me a square box. Then I'm going to come down to this point here, left mouse click, still holding the shift key down and I'm going to work my way around this shape placing shift key with left mouse clicks. And when I get back to the start point where the orange square is, you'll notice that when I hover over the orange square that it's now got a little X beside the cursor which means it will allow the join. So now if I left mouse click on that, it automatically creates the shape um, and there's my black outline. So I also want to create the black outline as a continuous outline around the inner side of the um, little blue, the green, sorry, the green wedges. So I'm just going to zoom out a bit so I can see it in full screen. So I've still got my point draw active. Okay, so again, I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to start back here at the 11 o'clock position and I'm just going to shift left mouse click at all of the corners, okay, of the green wedges on the inside of that shape. So just inside and then at the tip of the purple star. Again, when you come to join up, you'll get your little cursor with the X beside it. Left mouse click and it will form the shape while the, sh while the point draw is still active. Again, holding the shift key down, starting at 11 o'clock. I'm now going to click around the outside of the green wedge shapes and at the tip of the purple star. And again, we'll create the join. Now that I've finished placing that particular um, outline, I'm going to right mouse click and then left mouse click on finish point draw. And now I have my outline and you will see the three individual paths that have been created down here. Okay, I also want to put outlines around my hearts and my um, swirls or scrolls. So I'm going to come over here to my heart shape. I'm going to click on the first one to select it. And then I'm going to come down to the last one, hold the shift key down and select the last shape in the hearts and now it has selected all the ones in between. So once I've selected the hearts, I'm going to come over into my line section. I'm going to change the color to black and I'm also going to change it to 1.5 millimeters in thickness. So we'll 
make sure your left mouse click to deselect outside and we're going to do the same for the scrolls so I'm going to click on the first scroll shape hold down the shift key and click on the last one so now all the scrolls are selected so now I'm going to come over and I'm going to choose black again as my line color and I'm going to make it 1.5 millimeters so as quickly as that we can now create a, an image ready for our digitizing project we're going to save this design so we're going to come up to our save icon up here in the top left hand corner and we're going to save it into your documents and you will have your MySoNet folder and we're going to save it into my pictures and we're going to call it mandala so i've already created one so i'm just going to override it or cancel so now you can save that design ready for our next lesson in digitizing i hope that helps you understand the draw and paint window a little bit more and we'll see you for the next lesson shortly okay thank you have a great day